So, good morning all of you uh, and welcome to the uh, first introductory session of the introduction to design case studies. Uh, this uh, course uh, is uh, you know very dear to me, I have been taking a gap of 3 years in the minor course to actually recoup and you know learn how to sort of uh, 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 deliver this course. So, that is very valuable to all of you and it is also memorable. So, I have two sessions here, one with uh, you know very important uh, two types of uh, you know students here, the BTEC students and the BDA students and it is very critical. I wish we had the management students also with us, uh, that would be really good. When we go through this uh, lecture, you will understand why you know you need a collaborative effort in taking this forward. So, the total you know like signature for our course is called innovation by design. So, we are looking at design driven innovation. Similarly, there is technology driven innovation. There could be development design innovation, social development. So, you can have innovation at multiple levels. So, this once you learn or once you know about one type of you know innovation, you could clearly adapt it to various other levels. So, we will see through this journey how we are going to look at the you know the thing very closely. So, very interestingly IIT Bombay set up the design school very, very early when people did not even know what design was and they would look at the design faculty in a very interesting way. They would say what are these people doing? Why are they always making you know mock up models? They never used to make real like for example, if you are the earliest projects in IDC nearly you know uh, 25 years back was to design a load carrier on the head. Remember those gamelas? And our faculty colleagues would be making gamelas in paper and trying it out. It looks ridiculous, right? How can you make a gamela in paper or and uh, look at how you know how people are carrying an act, do drama with the gamela on your head and check out how your design is moving? So, creativity, mock-ups, you know, coming up with various new ideas of doing the same job, all those are the hallmarks of the design school. And what are the hallmarks of technology school? Quickly, one of you. You are all blank. <laughs> anyway, so like the technology, you know, schools looks at every aspect of material, manufacturing, you know, like metallurgy, all disciplines, chemical engineering. So, I need a lot of inputs from you while I go ahead, I will keep asking some questions on these areas. Then we will see how, you know, this thing. And now we have everything on campus, right? We have a technology school, which is like our major thing, I am just saying school because if it is a school, you are thinking differently. If it is an institute, you are thinking differently. Then we have the management school, we have HSS. So, what do not we have on the campus? We have all the disciplines on campus and it is a hot bed for innovation. It could be an you know very good uh, domain for innovation and if you want to look at uh, a YouTube video, just look at Fountainhead of Innovation, IIT Bombay. Then you will, you know, I prepared that, you know, video. So you can, you know, Google and check any time. We put it on the resources. Maybe you don't need to see. So we will put on the resources. You can, you know, uh, get there. And then you'll see how each professor is working on various aspects of innovation. So in 2008, when I, uh, 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 when I was, uh, you know, in US, I had gone to this alumni meet of IIT Bombay alumni, and this alumni meet was very interesting. All the IIT, all the IITs put together, they all said if we are together in the US, we are very powerful. You know this? It is called the Pan IIT. You heard about this association? My God, you must Google it. Pan IIT. So, what happens with Pan IIT? All IIT alumni are together. And then when you look at the type of uh, you know revenue they generated for the US, the type of entrepreneurship activities they did for the US, the type of technologies they developed everything on the computer is done by an IIT graduate. From the ethernet cards to the speed of internet to the components, oh God, unbelievable. And some of them are, you know, also IIT Bombay. So, 2005, I was in this location at Washington DC, where this wonderful event, where they called, they went and met the president, they were, you know, they, they had this huge, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like uh, 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 gathering of all the IITs as well as the ministers from India. And in this uh, gathering, uh, like I, uh, you know, showcased what uh, you know design can do for innovation. I just showcased this to uh, two of the organizers who are called the Shenoy, uh, uh, you know, brothers. They did in you know, 1970. They did 
IIT Bombay, you know, metallurgy and uh, civil, I think. So, you will see those pictures. So, when I went there and then they saw this work we were doing at the design school, they said, wow, this is really interesting. We would like to help you to take this forward. So, they gave us uh, $200,000. They are all very, you know, uh, 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 active and they are very, uh, what do you call, motivated. And they said, IIT ne itna kiya, chalo hum log bhi kuch karenge. So, all the alumni have that type of feeling in them. So, when you go to that events, right, they are very bubbling with energy to support you and give you various activities. And those are those, the studio what I am showing you uh, uh, is next to IDC, is a paradigm shift. So, in 2008, we tried to make this paradigm shift. What is the paradigm shift? IIT I design students come up with a lot of interesting creative mock-up ideas, mock-ups and concepts, very creative, very innovative. I am calling it innovative, but till it does not reach the market, it is not innovative. It is just an innovative idea maybe. Innovation happens when you, when the benefit reaches the user, that is very, very critical. Do not forget this. So, but then I am just calling it an innovative idea because it is still at an idea phase. So, with that in mind, you know, when we started the innovation studio in IDC, our mandate was, let me take student projects, whatever our MDA students had done and let me see if I can put in the market. That was the first mandate, you know, we took in the studio and, you know, we got the money and uh, we built the building. We have this whole top floor, you will, you will be visiting the studio as part of your, uh, you know, visit on Friday and like we, we built the studio and from 2008, we have been working on this whole tough demon of innovation where we really not getting the hang of it. Even today we do not have the hang of it, we are depending on you to tell us how this can be done better by the end of your, you know, course. So, these are the two brothers, the Sudhaka Shinoy and Suresh Shinoy. They are from Washington DC and they have done so much, the alumni of IIT have done so much in Washington DC that even if you have to repair a computer, they want an IIT graduate, they will not go to anywhere else. If, that, if, if it is an IIT Bombay graduate company, they will hire those guys to do any computer work. It is that phenomenal over there and like it is a euph euphoria of, you know, uh, systems. So, I like to give you a little bit of my background. I did mechanical engineering and after my mechanical engineering and while I was doing mechanical engineering, I was like, you know, at a location which was uh, uh, Kanchanbagh in Hyderabad. Anybody from Hyderabad here? Oh, one guy. Kanchanbagh is an area where there is all defense establishments, the defense metallurgical research laboratory, the defense electronics research laboratory, the defense, uh, you know, like uh, the, uh, the, the LRL, the electronics and the uh, developmental uh, laboratory, all defense laboratories and I born and brought up in that area. And my father used to work for something called Midhani, Mishra Datu Nigam Limited and there's a, they are the metallurgist of the country and they do all the high end uh, uh, titanium, molybdenum, the high end metals, super alloys they call themselves. So, for my engineering, you know, uh, for my engineering uh, project, I said, I am going to work in these labs very early when I was in fourth year and I went to defense metallurgical research laboratory and picked up powder metallurgy, picked up copper powder, compacted it, you know, very high compaction when you compact copper powder, you get billets. When you sinter these billets, it becomes metal, right? So, got it sintered and made the metal ready there, went to Midhani, which is next door to, me, to DMRL, which is the largest super alloys project, cold rolled this copper metal. So, from powder when you make metal, what happens? It is the purest form and then said, wow, the conductivity of this copper plate is four times better than the regular copper which is available in the market. So, you want very, very high conductive wires, conductive plates in any applications you could use this. That is my project. Why am I mentioning this to you? I am talking about even interdisciplinary organizations. You have to go beyond organizations, you have to go two, three organizations, you can come up with one innovation where you are saying, I can make copper which can be more conductive than the regular copper which is available regularly. So, from here we then, you know, after I did engineering, you know, when I came to design school, design school is heard of, they will keep asking you whether you have made any models. So, I took this copper plates to my professors and they were quite impressed. They are saying, wow, you did look at an application development of a material which is very critical for 
large scale applications in high conductivity areas. So, from here then I did my design, did a lot of very interesting uh, like projects in IDC and then went on to join Larsen Tubro as head of design. So, that is very you know uh, critical again. So, in Larsen Tubro what used to happen was that I was a lone designer and we had around 500 other discipline people sitting next to us. So, what was missing in Larsen Tubro at that time when I show you some of the case studies was that it was that they did not have any designer and their products were not in the market. They were actually at zero turnover. I will show you that small presentation little later. So, from Larsen Tubro I then said wow I designed this new products it did very well in the market. It was the one of the earliest innovations in the country and I said now I learned what innovation is and I want to sort of share this with students and you know everyone else. So, I joined IIT Delhi taught there for nearly uh, uh, you know 6 years and started a design program there now still running the master of design program at IIT Delhi and then came back to IIT Bombay in 2001 to see how I can you know sort of take this whole you know uh, innovation methodology innovation journey for, uh, further. So, that while students are in their uh, uh, you know graduation they can actually graduate as full uh, graduate with full knowledge of innovation. So, that is a major focus with which we have come and we will see how what the how far the journey has gone. So, while I was at uh, IIT Delhi we had to work on research because every pro, every faculty in IIT have to have a PhD. What happens when you have a PhD? Quick, quick. When you are doing research what do you do? Dwell deep into one small point of a uh, theory or one small point of a methodology or come up with frameworks right and you and what is research finally? It is building upon knowledge right. You have you, you, you research you find out what other people are working on and build upon that knowledge by citing them and making new observations and new, new uh, you know new details. So, you actually make one more sort of you know uh, 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 one more interesting finding which will actually build upon the earlier findings and that is how the knowledge is going you know, all in the technology realms and the realms. I said if I have to work on innovation what would I do? If I do a theoretical model will it work? It would not because innovation is about practical applications. So, for the research I did 5 live projects I said I am, I am at IIT Bombay people come and give me projects. So, I will work on live projects and synthesize that and come up with a model which will help you know uh, to, to make innovation happen. So, we call it the collaborative model for innovation you can see the slide. So, the and I call it the innovation by design model. So, here it is a very simple model. McKinsey called me as a consultant once and you know I was presenting this model to them and they are pretty you know intrigued and said Mr. this is such a simple model why people are not using it or if people are using it what are the challenges in it. So, the issue is the model is very simple but the challenge is on the implementation on the human side and the other aspects which I will show you little bit in the introductory lecture. So, what is the model for innovation? You need to have a core team. So, you people now in the class are the core team, 100 of you will make 10 groups while we start this project. So, you will be deciding your groups, we leave it open for you people to decide you and you are the core team, the core team for the next 4 months to work on a project which we will announce little later. Then you have the enterprise wide team, what is the enterprise wide team for an IIT? All the departments from management to humanities to, but whereas for a company all the disciplines ranging from finance, marketing, supply chain you know service design all those aspects will be for the enterprise wide team for, for your company. So, and then you have the third team which is the network external team which is the most critical for creative ideation and this team will give you the you know clear uh, uh, you know ideas of what is happening in the world around you. Without that you just cannot you know be innovative. So, these teams how are they operating? The core team works 100 percent that is you are on the course. So, you work 100 percent on this job you like for example, when you are doing a product you do not think of any other product basically in a company. I have noticed a number of times from my survey when I was doing this research 
that companies, the busiest man in the company is made the innovation manager. Do you think he can come up with innovation? He is so busy with running the factory. How do you run factories, tell me? How do you run companies? Can you be creative in running a company? For example, you established Ola, very famous example. And now you need to, you know, you have this establishment now done and you need to efficiently run the, the company. You just can't change, desi change design or change aspects every day. You can't change your interface every day. Even though you know that like interface is like terrible or something can be going seriously wrong, you can't change it. You are running on an efficiency model when you are already established. You can't do creative changes, you know, as the, the creative changes used to do when you are an incubator. When Ola was incubating, they could change every week. But when they are now operating, they can't change because your whole, you know, system is running. You are thousands of people working, thousands of people running and the systems do not allow you. You have to be on an efficiency model. So, if you are very efficient, you are on the efficiency model, can you be creative? Very difficult because it does not allow you to make too many changes because of the constraints. So, in this particular model, you will see that you have the core team, you have the enterprise wide team and the network team. Uh, the core team is 100 percent on the project. The enterprise wide team, for example, see you got your friends in metallurgy, they are your enterprise wide team. You got faculty in other disciplines where you go and say, you know, for example, I go to a faculty in environmental sciences and ask him, so I am working on this arsenic filter for Varanasi area where people are dying of arsenic poisoning. You know, like what do you think, you know, uh, is the technology which can help? The professor will surely tell you what is working, what is not working. But he will spend how much time? He will spend very little time. So, we are saying 10 to 20 percent of the time, the enterprise people will help you. Your friends will give you 20 to 30 percent of your time for your projects in case you motivate them enough. So, that is what I am talking about the enterprise and in companies, it is mandated. So, you have these large meetings, they call the product development meetings and people actually sit together in these meetings and when you have all these enterprise wide people sitting, you have a lot of interesting inputs coming to the, uh, to the fore. Now, let us see how the functions happen. So, this is very, very critical. This is very, uh, why am I showing you research, my research very early? I am showing you very early in the phase because it is very critical for us to operate very quickly in this course. We cannot really, you know, sort of uh, uh, lay back and say, okay, we will see later on. So, in this, for example, I am saying that once you are looking at your teams, you have also functions of each team. What are you doing as a, uh, uh, as a core team? In your core team, you surely will have to have at least one or two designers in your team. If you are 10 people or 8 people or 7 people, you will have to have two designers and rest maybe, if possible, from different disciplines. I am not mandating it, but you can choose that to happen. And your core team's main job will be to look at how you want to look at the creative ideation, understanding the user needs, where are the type of project we give, you know, and uh, most of the aspects of how are you going to visualize data. The strongest thing which came up was visualization in the research. So, if the creative team, the core team visualizes well, you will be able to get very good inputs from various team members. I will not go deep into the, you know, uh, composition and function uh, as of now, but then when you are when you're making a team of 8 people, we were very successful earlier. You can just Google ID 401. Earlier we used to call the course ID 401 and you can see some YouTube videos where students have worked phenomenally well on very wicked problems. The wicked problems are IIT main gate, how can you cross without getting hit? Terrible, right? IIT main gate. Yesterday my staff Nanda got hit by a car, Ola car at the IIT main gate. There is a professor who retired, is 65 years old, he got hit 3 months back at the gate. Supratik Chakravarti, computer science professor, early morning he was taking a turn, right turn from the Kanjumag side into the main gate, hit by a truck. This happening day out, day out. So, can we use the innovation methodology to see how we can solve this problem? We can. So, people have worked on this. The students would, you know, stay up whole night on that road to, you know, use different, different techniques and they did that and they came up with very, very interesting solutions. They collaborated with industry to see how it can be implemented, but finally they passed out and they forgot about it. So, that is another story. Anyway, so this is very, very important for us to understand the 
problem at hand and how to go about in the process. Okay. So, these are the functions of the team, I talked about the composition. So, when I say composition, when you are 8 people, all 8 of you are very different people, each of you have different different traits. So, those traits will come into picture when you are working on these projects. So, then finally, we found out that the most critical aspect in the, uh, uh, in the innovation journey is the user insight. I will show you some more slides where I will show you understanding what the user needs not imagining you know like uh, 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 and understanding its context these two become extremely critical and that is what is one of the key aspects which we considered. And another very important aspect is contemporary or new technology. How can we sort of bring in new technology or contemporary technology? I am not saying futuristic technology. Can futuristic technology be used today? It cannot. Uh, it, it needs time for implementation. Take another five years to come into market. If you want to, so how would you distinguish between innovation which is happening ten years hence and you're working on the project now, or innovation which is to come in six months? So those are the important aspects you can consider. And the hallmark for this whole project is creative ideation, which we will train you in while you are going through your course. We also have this very interesting sunflower model for. So there are multiple models. Oh God. It is very wicked, the innovation problem is not easy. After this class also, I am not very sure you know how much we would know, but we would know at least some aspect of innovation. So, what is the sunflower model of innovation? What is the sunflower? Sunflower looks towards the sun, right? And when it looks towards the sun, it is if your product has to be successful, it is like looking towards the sun, and if you have to look towards the sun, you need to have all the petals right, petals right. So, look at all the petals in any small product, let it be a small consumer good or a cane chair. You have all these aspects coming in, technology, user interface. Earlier what used to happen, people just used to work on a very, very interesting user interface and become successful. But today's environment, it is very complex. Look at all your new design domains. They all are pretty complex and they have multiple levels of innovation at multiple sections of their product, uh, product aspect. So, ranging from user interface to miniaturization to attributes to marketing, every aspect has to be innovated upon from day one, from your design stage onwards. If you can think about your marketing from your design stage, if you can think about your distribution from your design stage, you are doing very well. So, we will come up with this uh, model also to explain to you how this even if one petal breaks, if you are not bothered about looking at how your supply chain will work, your product will not reach the market. So, even if one thing fails, your product will not reach. So, your failure happens. <coughs> so, it is so complex and so unforgiving. You cannot leave any stone unturned and I am that is why I have like have such great uh, sort of uh, respect for entrepreneurs. I spent a lot of time you know, meeting entrepreneurs in sign and you know uh, spending time with the e summit with all the you know uh, entrepreneurs who come as well as the students who are you know dabbling with uh, entrepreneurship uh, while they are still students here they are phenomenal they are wizards because you need to consider so many aspects to come up with new product and new innovation so we did a lot of projects at the studio the products range 20 to 30 very interesting projects look at the first project the auto rickshaw, you all know this auto rickshaw, it has been there for so many years, right, on the roads and you know whatever manufacturer and Bajaj Auto is also well known that they got very good funding and they got very good like uh, you know uh, uh, position in the market, but the manufacturing technology they use is nearly 70 years old. It is made out of multiple small small parts, they weld it, weld the parts together, they pull it together and I said it is ridiculous. So, when you know Raji Bajaj called us and said, why did you look at this new design with new manufacturing, new technology, innovation, we said it is it's a very interesting product. So, we took this project forward, I will show you how what happened and you know and where it you know where it stopped. Out of this whole range of projects, we have some projects which have become very innovative, some projects which died in the middle, some projects with and and those you know death of products happened at different different stages. So, all those stages are very important learning for us and I will show you what the learning is. So, let me now introduce you to the studio, I showed you the outside picture of the studio. The person is standing is one of my studio heads, he has got he is my own student from master of design, he worked in a company for you know a couple of years, before he joined design also he was working, his name is Avinash Prabhuni and he did this very wonderful project which was called the solar oven. We are going to discuss this project a little later. Tell me 
how many of you have used solar ovens in your houses? I see one hand up. My God, nobody. There is a huge market for us, right? So, why have you not used a solar oven? Have you seen a solar How many of you have seen a solar oven? The solar oven with those mirrors opening and you know, you can keep your utensil inside and it cooks kheer or rice. One, two, three. Oh, I am glad. So, you have seen the you know, solar oven at least. So, we said in an innovation journey, understanding user needs is very critical. So, we went to 20 houses which had solar ovens and we asked them their problems. You know, and you know the government gives a huge subsidy to buy a solar oven. There is a subsidy. The, the Ministry of Non-Renewable Energy gives you subsidy to buy a solar oven and it is like half the rate and you buy, nobody is still buying. Interesting, right? It is giving you free fuel, you are cooking for free and you are not buying. So, here is the you know challenge. So, we will see during our course, how did we solve this problem or how did we, how are we attempting to solve this problem and that is a huge journey and we are still struggling. So, you know, Avinash will come back, you know, into the studio and we will talk about it. The next lead, design lead is Chari. He is also my student, Dattaram Chari. Uh, uh, I brought him here because he is a phenomenal designer, extremely good in uh, sketching and extremely, and Avinash was very good in uh, prototyping and design modifications, making mock-up models. And Dattaram was very good in sketching, creativity, putting things to, you know, show. So, different, different skill sets. And I will show you some of the sketches he has made for you. And he has been working on a very interesting product called the helmet for the two wheeler rider, where you do not need a police mandate to say that you are wearing a helmet. You are saving your head, you are saving your life, and you have to have a police rule to say that if you do not wear a helmet, we will you know fine you. Is it ridiculous again? So, what is this whole challenge that people do not wear helmets? Is it very inconvenient to use? Is it not stylish enough? Or is it too cumbersome? Multiple things. So, we will check that out also during the course of our, you know, uh, like uh, innovation journey. We have these multiple sections which I will take you along. But I also want to, you know, uh, uh, introduce you to Dattaram here specifically because he has done this wonderful sketches after this, what you will see on the values of death of a design idea. We are very ruthless here. It is a death. How many value, how many products have died in IDC? How many product ideas are dead in IDC? Any guess? How many students graduate from IDC post graduation? We have around 60 to 90 students who graduate, 60 students and hardly 1.05 percent products come in the market. They are great ideas, we get big shows and people give us great you know, sort of appreciation. But is it wrong? They are learning design, right? And then big companies are picking them up and they are doing very well in the industry. Every industry you see here, from Godridge to Crompton Greaves to Bajaj Auto to Maruti Udyok, any industry, we got our alumni in leadership positions. They are like heads of design, VIP industries. So, they are doing well. So, they learned, they are doing well. But when you are here, you learned the design process, right? And like for example, me, I went to Larson and Tubro and I did phenomenally well and that is the only innovation success story I have till now. I do not even have another success story even after 17 years in the field, after my Larson and Tubro days. You will have to find out why this is happening. Why cannot you have innovation products coming out of, you know, your school or your design, you know, very quickly one after the other. We will check that out, okay. So, here coming back to the auto rickshaw. Every project has a lot of depth of work. This auto rickshaw, for example, you can see the sketches, you can see the thermocol mockups, you can see the clay model. You all know all car industry uses clay modeling to make the first car. It is made out of clay. Did you know this? And when they, why do they made out of, make out of clay? Because you need to see a three dimensional object in front and they paint it so well that some, you know, uh, when you call visitors, they pull the handle and the handle comes into their hand. <laughs> it is that, you know, interesting. So, but you need the clay model and then you know what they do? Once they made a clay model, they will scan the clay model in 3D, take it into the computers and exactly make it in real because they do not make any mistake in the style and the shape because cars are very emotive, they are very emotive products. They may have a great engine inside, but the shape is as important as the engine. The style is as important as the engine. 
the comfort for the driver and the safety is as important as the power. There is no, in the sunflower model, every aspect in the car industry is very, very critical. I was very fortunate to be in the Mercedes-Benz Sindelfingen factory where they were presenting the car to an old couple who had come to buy. And it was a ceremony. How you sell your car, who buys your car, very, very critical. Anyway, so here we have this auto rickshaw, we made the design, we, you know, send it to, uh, 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 showed it to, uh, you know, uh, Rahul Bajaj and tell me, who is the custodian for aesthetics in this? What should be the style of an auto rickshaw? Should the auto rickshaw driver be the driver for the style? Or should the passenger be the driver for the style? Or should they be user centered design and they should be driver centered styling? You will be very surprised to know that today we have softwares and my PhD student called Sushmita Sharma works on this software where we say that the style is not my business, the style is for the people I am designing for. So, we did this whole survey with all the users in the market, all the passengers at different levels, the you know children, the you know and then you can see this eye moment recorder. Uh, uh, like uh, 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 you know uh, uh, fields and we also went and did the same eye moment record research with the auto rickshaw drivers. So, what is this eye moment recording? Eye moment recording is a very interesting technology which actually you know when you show an image in front of a screen the in uh, the uh, you know uh, the uh, 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 the eye moment is captured in this machine and these eye moments are split second moments which are very intuitive. And these intuitive movements tell you whether you, what type of form feature you like, you dislike, you, you, you know, adhere to. Very interesting. So, it is not your perception, it is a perception of the user. So, that is a very interesting research. And I put this nano over here because that is the, you know, uh, eye movement record of Ratan Tata. We were with him one, one day and I said, I want to see what you see in your thing. And look at that, you know, his, um, uh, his whole, uh, uh, you know, eye movement is moving towards the wheels. So, he, so that was the biggest trouble he had in his mind regarding the stability of the nano. This is subconscious. You can easily make the subconscious out when you do the eye moment record because it's a split second. You watch the uh, you know thing for 16 seconds and you're done. And the eye moment record comes and you will get to know what happens. And similarly for the auto rickshaw, what happened? Very interesting. The auto rickshaw. Look at the side flanks. The auto rickshaw driver loved those side flanks in the design. Are you seeing the side flanks? Those flat sides. That is the way the auto rickshaw driver wants to take quick turns, does not want to hit the culverts, does not want to hit people and you know that design finally was taken up for implementation. Anyway, that is just to show about aesthetics and form which is the you know first hallmark for a design school, but that is not, not the only one. So, look at this product, this is again a student project. This is a trolley for the, you have seen trolleys in railway stations, those large metal trolleys. You know how many people get a fracture because of the trolley? At least four guys in a month. Families, children, because it is so heavy and then when they hit, <coughs> you know. So, what was the user in, uh, insight here? We will make a trolley which will, which will, which will not hurt the person even if it touches. Because you know what happens in railway stations? People are there everywhere. You do not have a room to move also. And in that they are moving a trolley. So, then as again we, we designed one more conveyor system so that you do not need a trolley at all. That is another story, but when you do a trolley, what do you do? So, this trolley you can see those radiuses, we implemented it till the level of prototype and I will show you the next slide where we see what happens with these products and why they do not reach the market. I will like to show you a technology uh, product here. This is a very interesting, you know how many of you know this nanotechnology center in the electrical engineering department? You, any of you visited the center? So, we will go during a course, we will visit the uh, nano fabrication facility and how many PhD students are working there, you know? There are at least 40 PhD students from the campus and another 240 to 230, uh, you know, uh, 290 students working from all over the country uh, that uh, nano technology and nano fabrication facility is open for everybody in the country to come. They register online, it is working 24 by 7, just next to your department and like it is uh, it is one of the best facilities. So, here we had a PhD student in nano fabrication facility and she developed a sensor, a nano sensor which will sense the markers in the blood which are responsible for heart attack. Got it? When the, you know, 
there are markers in the blood whenever a person has a tendency to get a heart attack. So, these markers are very, very nano, right? These, you know, markers in the blood. So, this girl actually developed this sensor. So, once you develop the material, the sensor material, the ones which absorb the markers, the technology is very simple. Nanotechnology is quite easy. You have a cantilever, a nano cantilever, and the sensor is coated on the cantilever. Okay? So, you have this, and then and when you get these markers, they get absorbed on this cantilever. Only the markers are absorbed and the cantilever drops and when the cantilever drops, it gives you a signal. It touches, it, it closes the circuit and you get a signal. It is that simple from point of view of technology. But then what is very interesting is conceiving a product out of it. So, we conceived a product out of this uh, the technology and that is what is a collaboration between our electrical engineering department and design where we used mobile parts. The display is an old Nokia mobile display and a lot of uh, mobile uh, you know uh, components are used there to develop the uh, you know uh, design where you drop a blood in that small handle and you see the nano cantilever in the small section there with a blower and all the other technology. We developed this within 4 months and you know what happened? Within four months, the, the funding from the uh, government agencies increased four times and now this is a company in sign uh, called uh, the Nano Sniff. They are now coming up with multiple projects from uh, areas of explosive sniffing to multiple projects. So, we can actually do a very collaborative work in very high technology driven innovation. So, what is this innovation? This is technology driven innovation. So, there is design driven innovation, technology driven innovation, but then is design there? Yes, design is there everywhere. Technology is there everywhere. But what drives your innovation journey, you need to be very, very clear and you need to check that out. Then we worked with the professor contractor and chemistry department to come up with, you know, sensors, uh, you know, polymeric sensors for water based uh, sensing and like, you know, various aspects keep happening. So, now, we are very, very, if you go Google design, it is a very, you know, common word, you know, you have design happening everywhere. If you, if you, uh, you know, uh, design, you can design your clothes, you can design your bags, uh, you can design your, you know, sort of uh, regular, you know, furniture in the house. From there to the design process or technology, what is the difference between a mundane design activity to a professional design uh, course? So, let us quickly, you know, run through it. We are saying today that design is now like, you know, if you Google, you will get a lot of stuff, but we are saying that as long as you can identify user needs and find solutions, viable solutions for the user needs, it is design. But then my engineering uh, faculty also does the same thing in your classes in aeronautical and all, they are trying to work on the same issue. But then what is interesting is the designers who are trained to look at users very closely will have, will spend 80 percent time with users, whereas from the technology side when we do the same job, maybe we will spend less time and we will spend more time on technology. There is no harm. You need to do this at different levels and we will see how these things uh, go forward. Another very important aspect is to empathize with the user. Empathy is very, very critical over here. I will take you a little forward and show you how this uh, empathy, uh, you know, is the hallmark for coming up with this, you know, uh, uh, innovation journey and the design journey. And then, the, like in every class, in the earlier introduction design classes, you would actually increase your, you know, uh, creative uh, quotient by around 40 percent after this course. You all want to be creative? Who does not want to be creative? Tell me how many of you go to your hostel, uh, the second year and third years, hostel in the same route every day? Same route every day. Most of you, right? Even I go the same route every day to my house. I am calling myself creative. Why do we do that? We do that because it is safe, it is we have been going there, it is the shortest route and why should I explore new routes every day? It is just the way our mind works. So, our mind, you know, is the one which actually puts us in the uh, like a regular comfort zone which says that, oh, do not do too much of, you know, uh, activity. Whereas, when you do, when you are creative, you need to put up this whole new phase where you need to completely cheat the mind to come up with new ideas and new creative concepts and we will see how that can be done during the course. Then you need to, very important aspect in design is to test your user ideas by going to the users and testing your ideas and, you know, creating final prototypes by collaborating with various disciplines. Then what is innovation? We are saying that innovation is about translating an idea which is for the user to a product or service which delights the user. 
So, can you give me some quick examples of recent innovations which you all know from your point of view? Quick. Airbnb, excellent innovation. It is at the level of user interface and software. Any other innovations? Hmm? Wireless data transmission, wonderful. You know how many people are, how many researchers working on speeding up the wireless data transmission? 2500 to 8000 researchers are working on impre, increasing the speed all over the world in that one innovation domain. It is that interesting. things are not happening just out of the blue. What you are using on your mobile is you know thousands and thousands of hours of research which is on your mobile which is you know which where, where you are benefiting at very very low price all the innovation which has happened. Any other good examples which you have from which come to your mind which you use every day? It could be in the software area, it could be in the products area, it could be your you know home areas. Huh? Which one? Ola. Ola and Uber, we you know talked about it. They are all in the software realm. Why is apps and software ruling the ruling the world? What are they riding on? They are riding on Android phones, right? Or the you know, so they are riding on technologies which are already come in. You can't do you know. So then that also brings us to a very important aspect of ecosystem. You need to have an ecosystem around you to get innovation ha happening. Okay. So now let me come to my very important aspect of the you know introductory lecture. You may have around 20 to 40 professors in your department, right? How many professors have their products in the market out of that 40? Anybody from bio, biosciences or anybody from mechanical engineering? Mechanical, you know, uh, you know your uh, professor who is working in the engine area. No, oh God, he started a company which is doing very well. He's found out how to reduce fuel, diesel. You know how to reduce diesel in diesel engines by putting a very interesting electronic device on the engines. And he's got a large company; it's around 30 crore company in Pune. So around one or two professors would go into the entrepreneurship route and start. A company from the knowledge zone. But what happens in Germany? I, I did my one year PhD in Germany in the University of Karlsruhe, and my professor would have, uh, you know, Professor Albers, is Albert Albers, would uh, have around 19 PhD students. And these 19 PhD students had 19 research areas, and out of these 19 PhD students, nearly 12 of them would start companies. And they would, whatever companies they start, that knowledge they would give to all over the world. The company would be all over the world. Just one example, there is one company called Curb Conus. They make inserts for injection molding components. You know, when you put a screw, there is an insert, you put the screw inside that. And these PhD graduates have a small room of this size in Germany and the factory size all over the world is, in Pune itself, the factory size is half of IIT. So, they are sitting on knowledge, implementation and taking it to you know implementation all over the world. And they also buy back the components from Pune because it is so expensive to make in Germany. So, I am just saying that you, you know the whole aspect is very critical that knowledge and research is a very, very important component of innovation. So, are you able to see this slide? So, what is, so this, this slide is about design driven innovation. Okay? If it is technology driven innovation, where will technology be? Under the design, right? You will have technology in the first section. So, we made three values of death here for the you know for the product idea or for the products and did you see that the values of death are becoming deeper? Why are they becoming deeper for a designer? <laughs> because he does not know those areas well. If it is an engineer, for him the first value of death is very deep because he cannot develop mock-up models or design models and you know he, he, that is a great idea for them. For a company, for a very, very efficient company, where will the efficient company be? It will be beyond the last value of death, right? Ola is where now? Ola is at the end of pilot, you know, there are the large scale implementation all over the world, all over India. 
whereas all the other you know interesting products like watches and all most of them are when, when we see a product at very large scale it is at the last you know final uh, you know area of uh, implementation and you see the steps do you think there are really steps to climb up this ladder when you when the product ideas fall there are steps we still not figured out and do you think these steps are common even you may have thousands of entrepreneurship summits thousands of entrepreneurs coming and talking can you use it for your product idea no you can only take inspiration your product idea your entrepreneurship venture is different and it will have a completely different story to the other uh, entrepreneurial venture so this is the challenge of entrepreneurship this is the challenge of innovation there is no one formula for all so value of death for a software product value of death for a technology product value of death for a you know keen product are all different they have different different challenges different different you know collaborative ventures and different different activities so like just to go and you know uh, dwell more upon this now tell me did i show you the petrol pump in the first session last one tube of petrol pump that petrol pump reached here it became a runaway success i could see that it is 88 how many of you seen this petrol pump of mine the z line on the streets most of you have seen right they are all in the rural areas now they are no longer the cities because cities have become more modern so this petrol pump reached the final production while i was in lasana tubro within one year 3 months and then within the next 4 months it was very very popular and it completely wiped out all other competition and wiped out international competition for 5 years no international company could sell the uh, product because this product was so apt for our for our need we talked about user insight and user needs perfect for our condition perfect for our environment perfect for our uh, people perfect for our uh, roads whatever not roads of course <laughs> so it was perfect for our requirement so it, it did very well so i have one project which is reached here and said my god this product is reached. now i have to tell the methodology to everybody and i am still struggling with all of you guys to say what is this we learned while i was in lasan and tubro that i am not able to do while i am at iit bombay so while we go through this uh, journey i'll show you what happens okay so the petrol pump reached there so petrol pump leap frog from where from design to prototyping what happened i did the design i did the same thing you know i made a petrol pump out of thermocol and all my identical colleagues were laughing at me they said ye pagal aa gaya kahin se why was it needed to make it in petrol in thermocol was that i need to understand it very quickly the shape structure and design and that is the design thinking and i made that within within two days and when my when my senior managers came they could give me very good suggestions and we moved to prototype very early so now comes the very interesting lesson after my design ideas were approved we we actually sort of used a parachute to jump that valley of death in lasan and tubro so how did the parachute come lasan and tubro had excellent product development engineers you just have to give them a sketch they will make the prototype and show it to you within two days 400 product development engineers across in powai now the factory is no longer there in powai so we went sail through the stage and then again excellent manufacturing facility to do the pilot production so we pilot produced eight petrol pumps for different different oil companies supplied the petrol pumps to them and then we got tremendous amount of orders and we took a plane and reached final production so what was what what did we what i do what happened over there was i was the only designer one designer 600 engineers another 300 managers and you know technology domains and supply chain network <coughs> that big team and once the design was given the rest was very efficient for them whereas the designer had to be there at every stage for example my product development guy will say oh don't use this new material it's too difficult to get it'll take more time but i'll say no no i want this material and there's every time there's a tussle there is a discussion and we use all new materials because without new materials innovation and low cost will not happen <coughs> why is your laptop cheaper than your earlier laptop and better rugged more useful same reason new technology new resources new mass production all those things are going into and your products are becoming cheaper and better so same thing happened with the petrol pump so now coming to the first valley we discussed you know a lot about the you know valley 
So, here my design students actually showcase their design degree show, you know, just at the you know front of the valley. So, after that front, you know, most of our products, for example, students actually see what happens when you are a student, your whole temperament is to finish your projects, right. If as a faculty, I am asking for an excellent design solution, you would make an excellent model and you will close your process. No harm, nothing, the students are not doing any wrong, they are doing that work. But now, when I took a mandate in the innovation studio that I want to take it forward, so I am working with the student now, why is the student still to reach the, to cross the first valley. And we did this this year, I am very, very happy to tell you that we are going to show a case study on a water bottle for CRPF Javans, a filter based water bottle where we did the prototype while the student is here. We will show you that example because we are learning every day, we are saying that how can we leapfrog every stage of the valley of death and that we did and we reached the first valley. Then we said, elite example, we have not been successful for so many years, my design leads keep telling me what is this, you do not even have one product in the market still, Innovation Studio is there from 2008. A decade of an innovation studio and do not have a successful large scale product in the market, it is a shame. So, we said ok, let us check out which products will go into the market. So, what did we do? Do you think a design school, a design innovation center without the right type of uh, you know manpower in the areas of technology, management and uh, uh, you know uh, social sciences can do innovation? They cannot. I myself am falling back on my last and tuber example. So, what we did while the student was there in the school, we collaborated with the largest water bottle manufacturer in Bombay, made a tie up with him. So, now we plan to parachute to the pilot production. So, maybe while your course is going on, we will be showing you this journey and maybe you know we will reach the you know last uh, you know in the in the filter based water bottle for CRPM Javans, we will reach the final uh, you know implementation stage where we will have a large scale implementation because the CRP have already ordered 8 lakh water bottles because it was in papers IIT Bombay student designed this wonderful crank based water bottle for CRP of Javans because CRP of Javans are in the field for 2 weeks in the forest without water and they get very very dirty water and on top of it the locals actually poison the water sources. So, they find it safe to use uh, you know dirty water and filter it rather than uh, uh, drink water from ponds. It is very, very you know and then we use all our methodologies of you know working closely with the users, the CRP of Javans come regular to our office, they give us all the inputs and you know with this direction we are going ahead and seeing how it will work and maybe we will share this story with you while we go in this course. And then once we have you know uh, like uh, the details then hopefully we will be able to have you know uh, full scale production and uh, implementation of the uh, water bottle. Uh, and this water bottle has an integrated filter, a cranking filter. So, you put a put a filter in the water, then we will show you the video and then you crank the water filters from that filter and passes into your bottle and that is the design we are working on. So, in this now for example, you see a lot of projects over here, some of them are in the first value of death. The first value of death, the first one the auto rickshaw is in that stage the uh, uh, this, uh, the uh, the uh, chemistry you know the polymeric sensor uh, uh, water filter is in the second value of death uh, uh, the uh, explosive detection device with nanotechnology again is in the first value of death so all these now i am now able to mark them saying that which value of death they are in you can pick them all up if you can either have large resources to work or collaborate with industry or have entrepreneurship model got it so, that way we can move most of these innovative projects out and that is the helmet I was talking about in the center. Center you see this helmet, I was talking about the helmet little while ago, why do not you use helmet? Let us see how this helmet, you know I will spend a little bit more time on the uh, helmet story uh, to tell you and then it is a very complex phenomenon of interface between user insight, understanding of social realms, humanities, technology and design. So, there is no you know hard and fast rule ki kon pehle aata hai, kon piche jata hai, kaise kaam hota hai, there is no, there is no, there is no sort of you know uh, hard and fast rule. So, it is a very, very complex methodology of innovation. So, you need to really have a very motivated core team to work on innovation, then even while your students over here 
you can do some phenomenal work, you can have some phenomenal innovations in the market. So, that ecosystem has to be provided, you have the ecosystem and the right type of you know orient has to be provided, that is why we are going to show you all those things. So, let us now look at that center part and that center part which is the collapsing helmet is actually one of the projects which is in the first valley of death still. Just to run you know a little bit on the petrol pump, remember I was telling you about the petrol pump story, the Z line petrol pump became a very, very large success story. Uh, uh, it reduced the price of uh, price for Larsen Tubro, but around you know 75 percent cheaper. When my boss in Larsen Tubro would tell me, Chakravarti, you have to design a new product which is cheaper than the old product, I was scared. I was said, how the hell can you use new materials, new technologies, new uh, you know uh, 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 new production methods and make a product cheaper? Because everything you use new is going to be expensive. <coughs> Today it is commonplace that you do you know that your laptops and all are cheap, but at that time it was not like that. It was in 88 when I joined last in Tubro, I graduated from IDC and straight away you know I was picked up by LNT. So it was very shocking for me, but then when I use the methodology of design thinking, you know, like taught in IDC, you know, uh, threadbare, I could reduce at multiple levels the sheet metal. You see the shape, because of the shape, I reduced sheet metal by around seven, you know uh, 65 percent. They used to make boxes earlier, large boxes, and you know those sheet metal used to come from Japan because my machine was from Japan in LNT. There is an Amada punching machine which punches sheet metal and folds that was from Japan, so it was very, very expensive at that time. And very interestingly, we had a thorough user study. We spent one month filling petrol. I would stay at the petrol stations, fill petrol, talk to petrol uh, the vendors, talk to dealers, and uh, talk to users who came to fill petrol. And you, and then who are the next users? My manufacturing people. Talk to all the manufacturing people, found out what the problems are in the current manufacturing setup, and they would tell me as interesting stories about the problems. And using all that, we came up with the design, so that whole design became uh, you know uh, very successful. And pump owners demanded for the Z line pump because of its unique shape. And then what happened? Because of the unique shape, people identified this petrol pump as giving correct measure of petrol and high quality petrol. Because we added a very interesting bearing which is called unidirectional bearing in the sensor. So, you the, the, the station people could not cheat because when you trigger the nozzle, the sensor could go twice and it could read 2 ml more. So, we because I was in the field, I could know all this. So, we had this you know bearing inside the pump. So, the Z line pumps are giving more petrol, better petrol. So this, you know, this became a you know very interesting phenomenon, and then LNT was getting you know government orders which are never heard of, saying you know specifications which meant which said Z line petrol pump, which was unheard of before in the government circles, and then you know the competition got wiped out. We'll come down to what happened to the competition because they came back to us. We'll tell you that story a little later. Okay, so I got another interesting product. You seen this post box on the campus? They are all our prototype, all the prototypes we made were all put up all around the campus. This one is in which value of death now? First, second or third? Third, the pilot production of 200 numbers were put all over the country and we failed miserably. One small error, we were so passionate about shape and size and high tech looks that we forgot that the user who is so used to a 40 to 50 year old uh, you know post box is looking for a round top. He cannot identify this box at all, he thinks it is a dustbin. We spent 4 years on this design, do not laugh, <laughs> but we failed miserably. Stainless steel, we said wow stainless steel not rust, because rusting was a problem, yeah. we got a problem called rust, so we said it is not rust, we went stainless steel and we said when we make it in stainless steel, why to paint it, waste of money. Why to paint it red? But look at the perception, and then the educated loved it. They said, "Oh, we know it's a post box, all the logos and all." But the lot of other population, which was very quick, my even my father was educated. He said, "What the hell? I don't like it. You know, it should be red." There it is. So then you see now the one at the main gate. Have you seen the one at the main gate? It's red and it's got round top. That's the final design which is approved now, and now we want to sail to the mass production. So, we made 200 of this and we put it all over the country, all over the country from you know Jammu and Kashmir to Kanyakumari, 
four four ten ten in each location. And large companies like India Post do a survey. They check the survey, and the survey result was that difficult to identify, difficult to distinguish. So now we are, you know, this is in the third value of debt, and we need to go ahead. And let me introduce Aniket now to you. Aniket has been my, you know, product development. Uh, Aniket, come here. So he's been working with me on the post box, and we developed the final design, and we took this, you know, forward now. So computer design and prototyping, an extremely critical aspect, and Aniket has been working on that aspect uh, with very, very, you know, uh, good rigor. And very interesting aspect is that when you work on uh, a, a prototyping uh, development design, it's also a big challenge because you're working with the unknown. You don't have this product ready, and you're working on the product, and you're taking it forward. So we'll show you this case study also while we go in the journey, uh, you know, uh, forward. So the next important, uh, I was telling you, this is also in the third value of death. We made one prototype, it got approved. Sorry, second value. The India Post did not give orders. Why does an India Post give orders when your product is so good? Any reason? Huh? Could be cost. Very good. Any other reason? This product is very good. It we tested it out. Instead of using four people, they can use two people. In fact, the porters were not happy. अरे ये तो दो लोगों को अभी दो दो ट्रॉय लगा देगा हमारा तो यू नो प्रॉब्लम हो जाएगा बट स्टिल वी सेल थ्रू दे फाइनली हैड टू अप्रूव इट बिकॉज इट्स गुड प्रोडक्ट वी यूज द बेस्ट बेरिंग्स वी यूज रेक्सेलो बेरिंग्स बिकॉज दे वर नॉट यूजिंग बेरिंग्स दे बुश बेरिंग्स विच आर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी इयर्स ओल्ड बुश बेरिंग्स वी यूज रेक्सेलो बॉल बेरिंग्स सो इट्स वेरी इजी टू मूव वी यूज द राइट डायमीटर टायर सो दैट इट कैन गो थ्रू पॉट होल्स वेरी इजली बिकॉज इन बॉम्बे यू नो द फ्रॉम द स्टेशन फ्रॉम द स्टेशन टू द पोस्ट पोस्टल डिपो There is a road in the middle which is pothole ridden, so it has to go through that road also. Why do you think you don't get orders from government agencies very quickly? Huh? Red tape. Red tape. Could be red tape. What else? How did we get order for two hundred number of post boxes then? Perseverance. Totally depends upon the champion. So we have to champion the cause. If I champion the cause, if I go ten times to Delhi, if I was an entrepreneur, I would not leave it. It is not something we ask for in the first place. Very good. It's for the user. It's for the end product. So it is not affecting them in any way much. So that's also very. So how would you educate them? So there's education at every level uh, in the innovation journey. Let it be Larsen and Tubro, or let it be India Post. The amount of convincing, the amount of education which is needed is tremendous everywhere. So this is in the prototype stages, so and we can call it the second value. We didn't go to pilot over here. Postbox went to pilot. This fellow is still at the prototype level, which is working. So <laughs> my media students are smiling now. So my login ID is Chaku. So I call now. I want to show you very interesting issue. Now I talked about the you know discussion on concerns. Innovation comes only with concerns at every level, okay? So I call them the seven C's, Chakku seven concerns for innovation. So what are these seven concerns? How do we go about these concerns? So I will, you know, close with a small story, uh, you know, of these seven concerns. So what is the first concern? We talked about problems, users. Now what could be the first concern? The first concern is actually the cause. That is, you have to stand up. Like she was telling me, now if I was an entrepreneur, the trolley would have been in the market by now. If I am so bothered about the fellows getting fractured on these railway stations, I should have slept till I got the product approved. So the concern is part of your system, part of your you know uh, empathy, part of your being. So that concern, the first concern which we call the cause, that you stand for a cause like an NGO. How many of you saw NDTV news yesterday night? Nobody. You don't watch news on the TV or on mobile. Pe? TV is not there. Today, all of the Netflix and all of them are on mobile. Pe aata hai. Anyway, yesterday's night's news was, you know, you know, heartbreaking. There were forty orphaned kids on the roads at Jantar Mantra in Delhi, doing a dhanna in front of the government. Because they lost their parents, there are or agricultural, they lost their parents for by suicide. Farmers, no farmers' kids were sitting. Forty. On the other side, there was this Chennai farmer sitting again for the same reason. 
that the loan waivers were not there and they were. Tell me one thing, I believe there is some 6,500 lakh waivers done for industry, crore waivers, 6,500 crore waiver done for industrial, you know, various industries. But whereas for agricultural farm loan waiver, I think it is around 2, two lakh uh, crores that has not been done. And why do farmers commit suicide? One my last time you were there, last course. She was there in the last course where we had a course on design issues and we had some expert economists who came and discussed this. I think you were also there in the last course, no? So tell me why do farmers commit suicide and what is happening with our commercial crops nowadays? Quick. Land is depleted. What else? It is all become commercial crops. You, your investments have become very high. You buy seeds, you buy fertilizers, you buy everything and you have a loss, you lose everything. So then you take loans and you are not able to repay your loans when you lose. So all the commercial crops, traditionally it was not commercial crops, all local community level were farming. With com and then the biggest, you know, the kids were telling me yesterday in the, on the TV, the biggest challenge is the government fixes the price. Who are you to tell what price I should sell the grains at? It is one of the biggest rackets which happen. Why should a farmer, and then you know what happens, the prices drop drastically that one month when all the producers in the market. People who can afford to store it for some more time, get a little bit more money. People who are much more poverty ridden, they cannot even wait for one day, they will be in much deeper trouble. It is a crime. So we, and if you need to work on that, you know, problem, you know, there are you know, a lot of people working and what will you do in such situations? When you are, you know, whole country, there is so much of agricultural farmers available and you know, you have so, so many deaths happening uh, due to suicides. Anyway, the cause is very important. You have to stand for it. If you stand for it, you will work for it. So now let me tell you the story. One of my students came late for class, second semester. It was his P2 project and because of that delay, he was, you know, his, uh, you know, I asked him why, why he was late for a couple of days. He said, my friend died in a motorcycle accident and his helmet was at the back of the motorcycle, it was tied at the back and he had gone to book a ticket in Pune and then he hit a, you know, a truck head on and he died. So I told him, can you take it up as a project assignment? Why do not people wear helmets? So he took it up as his, you know, assignment and he worked very well on this. Today he is teaching at DSK in Pune. He is a faculty at the, you know, DSK Design Institute in Pune. You can Google Mandar Kale. So, so first cause we met, we said like, okay, we will stand for this and said, why people do not use helmets and we will see to it that they use helmets. So that is the first thing. The second concern is the context. It is very, very important. Our context is the most critical aspect for our design. And what is a context? Concept is all about the environment, environment of the product, what you are doing, your background, the user's background, the socio-economic status of the user, the environmental conditions at which the users are uh, there. For example, if it is a college student, what are his, you know, what is his context? For example, a lot of kids we, we talked to said we won't wear helmets because we can't talk to our friends at the back or you know we don't wear helmets because you know it spoils our hairstyle. All these are problems for design, right? If you are designing a new helmet, you better design a helmet so that your hairstyle remains good or your hair does not get spoiled. So every problem of the user has to be considered with great detail. You just can't skip those problems and to my shock we found out that the Indian standards do not talk about comfort at all. And they have borrowed all the standards from UK, which is a very cold country. So there is no ventilation in the helmet. And in Delhi, you can, your head will get cooked if you are going at 2 o'clock on the, the you know, road. Why will you wear a helmet? So these are the you know, important challenges and the context becomes very critical. For what you know, design are you doing? And when it is a context, you can go very narrow in the context, then your design and innovation can happen very well. Without the context, it does not work. Then come, you know, very important aspect is comprehension. A number of times what happens is you have the context ready, you have the cause ready, but you do not really, you know, come to terms with all the design insights, all the insights which are very critical. Like the, I was telling you about it gets very hot, 
So, what are the insights we draw from there? We said, the, oh, we need to have ventilatable helmet. And then, when I want a ventilation helmet, the Indian standard says that you can't put a hole on the top of the helmet. So, I have to fight with the Indian standard saying that, you know, either I put an ISI mark on it or I do not put a mark, but I want it to be ventilated. Otherwise, people are not going to use it. Another interesting, you know, woman riders told us that our peeche ka baal ke liye baitha hi nahi helmet. When I have a, you know, judy at the back or when I tie my, you know, uh, hair at the back, the helmet does not sit. So, our students came up with a wonderful helmet with a little cut at the back as a design solution. So, you have multiple ways of, you know, uh, uh, attempting that, but the design insight is very critical. Okay? So, that insight will come to, you know, large, uh, you know, uh, discourses which you will have to come up with and then, see, we still not start the design process at all. And now, tell me which disciplines will be important for insights? We need to understand about socio-economic status of the user. <coughs> there are professors in uh, HSS called, you know, Professor uh, Narayanan who works on uh, socio-economic issues, Professor uh, uh, Patsarthi who works on sociology issues about city development, traffic roads. So, all these people have great information with them which will help us to, if you are working on a helmet, to see what things are happening. Then the like very important aspect is the <coughs> check, the fourth C. If you do not know whether you are going to Thane or VT, you need to be so clear that I am going, I am going in this direction, this should be the helmet design and not bother about anything else. For example, if the helmet has to be ventilated, it has to be ventilated. If the helmet has to fit in my, you know, it has to collapse and fit, it should become more narrow for easy of carrying, it has to become more narrow. If the helmet has to be easy to wear, it should be easy to wear. So, your, your, your points should be very, very clear and you must not, you know, negotiate on these points and that is why it is called the check. So, we made this check and we took these things forward <coughs> and then comes the design process of making multiple ideas, sketches, various, you know, uh, aspects and after, you know, making all those, uh, you know, uh, design, uh, you know, uh, uh, co concepts, uh, we have a very interesting study where we found out that every problem, like for example, we said ventilation, there will be some 10 ideas. Easy to wear, there will be some 10 ideas. So, all these ideas will be around 50 to 60 ideas. You do something called affinity mapping and put these ideas together and make concepts. A concept is something which will work. That is, it, it merges the ideas of ventilation, it merges the idea of style, you know, good looking, it also merges the idea of wearability. So, all these things put together will become the, uh, become the concept. So, a couple of ideas together will build a concept and you cannot build concepts you know, without going through ideas. So, this is very important lesson we will, we'll, you know, go through little later uh, during the course to show you how you need to do that and we are going to do it all in the class and we will learn. Then this is the challenging part, crafting. You have the tinkerer's lab. How many of you use the tinkerer's lab? Very good. So, the tinkerer's lab, we are doing tinkering, we are building mock-ups, crafting things and when you craft and when you try, you know, my biggest, uh, I am a biggest fan of one of the clubs in IIT, which is the autonomous uh, underwater vehicle. I am their biggest fan. I keep going and catching up with them. I keep learning from them. Every time I go and ask them, kaise chal raha hai, kya kar rahe ho? they go to the swimming pool, they keep testing their, you know, uh, uh, underwater uh, vehicle and I keep asking them, kuch help chahiye kya? You know, like, can I also support you? And then after three years of constant follow-up, they agreed to take my help. In, because they are so good, they are entrepreneurs, they are innovators. People like me will spoil the innovation. So, one time they said, we, we need some, you know, very high quality uh, you know, gasket so that water does not get into our vehicle and we need some money. I said, I will give you from a project. So, I gave them some money to buy those, you know, those uh, valves so that the water does not get into the, you all know this uh, underwater vehicle, you know, you must Google this underwater water, autonomous vehicle. Then after that what happened, I had a student in mobility and, they, and you know they made this uh, underwater vehicle like a box. It was a big box and I was always seeing like as a designer, you felt that this should be something like a veil, not like a box. So, we had a student who actually, you know, sort of didn't do his summer internship and he, you know, he had to do a summer internship. I said, why don't you work with these guys and, you know, try to improve the box into a proper, you know, aerodynamic shape 
and to my surprise, we, we, we spent um, one and a half months with them, we showed them all and the level of efficiency the uh, kids had uh, at the next level, the, you know, first we showed them a concept, mock up, finish, they, they did not come back to us and I see the final prototype and I went back to them running, oh please give me these addresses where you did the tooling, please give me the address where you did the forming and now they have this wonderful, you know, underwater vehicle, autonomous vehicle with this beautiful veil shape, right type of openings and just a small input in the middle and you know they could you know uh, implement very fast. So, what are these teams doing? Why are these teams so innovative? How are they able to you know deliver such wonderful projects? It is a lesson for us, it is a lesson for me, I go and keep learning from them. So, we have these innovations happening all around the campus, we must keep our eyes open to see what is happening. So, when I came to crafting, I was saying that this, they crafted this autonomous vehicle so well that you know like we learned from them and we said now for our oven, we took the addresses from them and for the solar oven, we are doing the crafting in the same vendor where the autonomous vehicle people went because they went to the right vendor. Who did the dye and who did the forming for them, the plastic forming of the shell. So, that is the you know like uh, lesson we learned and then the most critical aspect which is the final aspect for innovation is have you made your product reach the users, have the users liked your product and you know what type of you know large scale dissemination the product will have. So, the large scale dissemination becomes very very important. So, in our case for example, our helmet is still at the concept stage, we have a wonderful collapsing helmet with a ventilation port and you know and while that was happening you know like we, we found one very interesting helmet in the market, it was a horse riders helmet and it was so good and it was also very cheap, it had the ventilation ports it did not have the collapsing nature, but I am saying that people keep on innovating and you will see different different products while you are developing uh, in the market to take inspiration from. Okay. So, those are the 7 C's. So, we have the 7 C's, we have the values of death, we have the stages in the design process and we have to merge all these together. So, these 7 C's are the merging aspect for us, merging user insight, technology, building mock up, building prototypes you know using the you know all the aspects is the way we go to you know work on this and this is the critical aspect for us and we will use the last in the last uh, I think 4 classes we use the 7 C's as a stages, stage gates to go forward. So, that is the you know journey we will go through and every stage I will show you one project which is either at second value of death or the third value of death or successful in this journey to explain each of those uh, you know uh, each of those C's in great detail to you during the whole course.